Hello guys and God bless. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everyone had a good season over Christmas and had a good time with family and friends. Um, the Lord spoke to me over this Christmas season and wanted me to do a video on something that I was not really expecting, but in retrospect have been able to see the seeds that he has, I guess, planted in me to to do this over a period of long period of time, actually. Uh, it came up as a video in my news feed. I'm subscribed, subscribed to this channel called Conspiracy R Us. And uh, he did a series of videos called The Nephilim Look Like Clowns. This is number three, number two, and I suppose we can click here and see the rest of them. Uh, number one. And he was inspired by this channel, Understanding Conspiracy. And this guy did a series of like 17 videos on the subject, and that's all he's done. And if I memory serves me correctly, his started with a vision of a clown. And he gets into like the DMT trips that people are having and seeing these gestures. And I know Joe Rogan's one of them, and you know, there's some other people. Uh, you know, and he gets into Katy Perry and her deal, and um. As I started going through all of this, and I just did not realize how deep this goes. I couldn't fathom how deep it goes. I am so glad that these guys did these videos because I've, I've saved them. They're on the Google Drive uh, in the link below. You can watch them at your leisure. Uh, this is a like a snippet version and of, of this guy's here. So... Um, just different takes. You'll see different connections than what I'm pointing out here. Um, I watched all three of these, but only watched a couple of these. Okay, I didn't get the whole series as of yet. Um, but as I started to watch these three, the Lord just flooded me with information. I was jotting down notes and everything else. It took me back to this study here um, about Syria. And during Obama's speech... I don't believe it was this one. Uh, it was it was a t speech in the garden here, uh, the White House lawn possibly. There was this entity back here that people had noticed, and I was one of them that noticed. And I was like, "What the heck is it?" And the camera actually goes to it, and you can see it. And of course, yeah, these are upside down sharks. You know, just different things. As you look at this entity. Um, you're like, okay, it's got like blue eyebrows, some weird mouth and nose. There's definitely features here. And as you start to look at it, it, it looked a lot like the Moy of Easter Island. And so just little connections started happening for me as I was watching this thing. And, um, you know, there's video of it and everything else. And it actually moves its mouth. You'll see it move its mouth. It's pretty creepy. But anyway, so I started just looking around for different things with like blue eyebrows. And then I did a video called something about blue eyebrows. And it's got like, well, it's got, you know, the magic mirror in it. It's got Esmeralda from, you know, the uh, the sitcom uh, Bewitched. Um, there's, there's all kinds of stuff. I'll pull it up here real quick just to show you. Let's see here. Okay, so here's the folder on the blue eye shadow. You know, you got the Queen of Hearts, you got all the Mayans, um, you know, different rock bands, different things, you know, that goes on here. And I was looking at that, um, that entity, which I'm going to actually pull up the video for you, just so you can see this thing. It doesn't move much, but you'll see a little bit um, as, it's, as it's going on. <clears throat> So let me try to get back to that real quick and uh, show it to you here. Let's see. There it is. So. Now the president from the Rose Garden, he's going to ask for congressional authority for a limited strike in Syria. The United States presented a powerful case. It's right here. That the Syrian government was responsible for this attack on its own people. Our intelligence shows the Assad regime and its forces preparing to use chemical weapons, launching rockets. So this isn't my work. Somebody else pulled this up, and then I started doing a little bit of work on it. For national security. It risks making a mockery 
of the global prohibition on the use of chemical weapons. Okay. To terrorist groups who would do our people harm. In a world with many dangers, this menace must be confronted. Now, after careful deliberate our military has been so the camera angle switches a little bit there. To execute this mission is not time sensitive. It will be effective tomorrow or next week or one month from now. So anyway, so all these little uh this is another video of it. So, but anyway, uh, that's what kind of was in the back of my mind on this video. So let's get started. So the title of the video, obviously, Carnival, uh, a play on the word carnival. The uh, as a boy, I was always fascinated with this toy. I never liked it, but I was curious about it. I would, I, if you're familiar, you crank this handle over here and this. This clown pops out. It's called Jack in a Box. Everyone should know that. And uh, I would like crank it a couple times, then leave it, then come back, maybe crank it a little bit more, and you know, it's, it'd jump up and scare the crap out of me, and I'd, you know, whatever, throw it away for the for a couple days. But anyway, this Jack in the Box uh, is where it got started with this study here. So the origin of the Jack in the Box is about a guy who put a boot. Uh, put a devil in a boot, according to folklore. Folklore, and uh, you can you know we could you can wiki this yourself. You can check it out. But the Jack in the Box was called literally a devil in the box. Okay, and um, it's referenced in the books of John Fox's Book of Martyrs, uh, which is mistitled here. It's Acts and Monuments. They probably want to make it sound a little bit you know toned down, but um, first published in 1563, and it was a term used to describe a swindler. So most of us in this community or the subscribers that I have are familiar with this black box. It's all over the world. You see this thing everywhere, different landmarks, different places. Um, and, you know, obviously Mecca has a giant black box and all these people circle this. Okay. This is symbolic. People are referenced as waters uh, in the Bible. That's one typical metaphor that's used or personification that's used uh, to describe people and they're they circle this box they circle this box you know whatever it is and if you speed it up it looks like they're circling like water it looks like they're going down a drain which is exactly what the monument is at 911 it's actually a flipped up version of this if you were to take this boom flip it upside down you would have a box on the inside and water in here that goes down the drain, and that is symbolic, or the souls go into hell because of what they are worshiping, idol worship. All right, so they circle this, and they are going down the drain, the black box. It's the cube, um, or the cube of Saturn, which is something you can easily look. This is another rendition. This is shown by the Grok several times, and um, this, this freaked me out the first time I saw it, so... Um, what this is, this is Washington, D.C., which is, has this border because it's not a country or a city. It's a district of Columbia. And this is the border for the district of Columbia. And out of this box comes this clown. You can see it. Uh, if you look over here at the traced version, you can see the types and shadows here of where they get that. You have this crooked mouth. You have a big eye, which is, guess what this is? This is Arlington Cemetery right here. So you have this huge eye where all the souls are going. You have this other eye that's kind of faint over here, a big nose, crooked mouth, some sort of hand coming up here out of the box, holding this ball. Okay, now the ball, some people want to call ball or bale. Some people want to say it's a new type of Eucharist or it's the mark of the beast. Uh, you, you know, you can draw your own conclusions. That's fine. But this is definitely a clown complete with a hat with a little flag at the top all right all the way down to his head and you can see that pretty plainly if you go to your own google earth and check it out the body's kind of hard to, to put into place here but uh this is this is definite and this i don't have it in this folder here but this is the same thing over vatican you'll find a jester wearing a hat and over mecca you'll find like the big you know the clowns with the big hair you'll find another one, okay? There's there's three of them that I know of that I've seen, okay, and have traced myself. 
So this isn't the only one. This is this isn't a fluke. Okay, this is times three at least. All right, and um, and yeah, that's that's exactly that's traced. You cannot deny that. Anyway, so to keep going here, what Satan is doing is he's trying to copy the new city Jerusalem. Okay, the new city Jerusalem is a perfect cube coming out of the heavens that will descend. Uh, the knockoff version is is him. All right, this this. The system we're in, which we're going to talk about, which we're going to talk about extensively. So he's trying to copy the new city Jerusalem or the box. Now, another way is if you look at the dimensions of the Holy of Holies, it's also a perfect cube uh, with two angels on the inside and the Nar and the Ark of the Covenant and as well as palms and flowers. And if you look in, I believe it's the first Chronicles or I think it's first Chronicles. 18 possibly i'd have to look it up but it gives you the dimensions of the holy of holies which is a perfect cube which is also rendition of god's city his bride a perfect cube okay so he is trying to copy exactly what god has done okay uh revelation 21 15 if we look at the dimensions of the walled city perfectly square okay so this is satan's knockoff and again right next to all the souls going to hell with the waters being drained uh, out of the system. So now that we have your attention, hopefully, um, we're going to talk about some things connected with the Nephilim here. And um, Nephilim means to fall or to be cast down. And I immediately thought of like the cast down type of clown or the, the clown that's been brought down or taken low. And it's because they can't ascend. They're, 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 in, uh, they're a satanic manipulation. All right, it's it's a satanic, uh, not a creation because a creation you start with nothing and you create. This is taking something in existence and manipulating the creation that God has intended. Uh, so it's their loss, cast down to fall, the fallen ones. Okay, um, so the sad clown uh, definitely portrays that. So the Bible tells us Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and then times of Noah, and also after that, which would be the flood. Uh, to most, this isn't a surprise. Reading the Bible, we encounter some of these, obviously Goliath, Og, Nimrod, who became a mighty man. I think Nimrod's name means mighty hunter, and the rebellion um, also akin to the slang word for idiot, fool, or jerk, or a clown. Okay, so Nimrod does carry that weight as well, as far as you know, some sort of clown material, some sort of clown reference. Uh, you know, you're a nimrod, you're an idiot, you're a jerk, you're a fool. So that's one other thing that came uh, to mind. Mighty Hunter, we're going to get into the hunting portion on this here a little bit. So just keep that in the back of your mind as well. So as I started the study, I start from the beginning, right? Where did, where did clowns come from? What was the beginning and to my surprise but not really my surprise was egypt around 24 bc um, they served in psycho-religious psychological role and traditionally the roles of priest and clown have been held by the same persons so there was obviously a huge clue that okay something is anything comes out of egypt you have masonry that comes out of egypt you have all this stuff the, the pyramids, the, you know, the reincarnation or the incarnation of spirits, the mummification, DNA manipulation, it all started here, okay? And um, so this was no surprise that clowns actually started in Egypt. So as you look in the history of clowns, more and more information becomes clear. You start to realize this is definitely a spiritual connection between clowns and evil spirits. The Pueblo and Hopi traditions show us this as well. So this is where this is where the first place wiki will take you, all right, as far as our history here in the States, is the Pueblos and the Hopi Indians, which we're going to get into a little bit more. We're going to touch on it here, uh, but we're going to get into it much deeper here shortly. So Native American mythology, the trickster channels the spirit of the coyote and becomes a sacred clown character. The Heoka is an individual in Native, Air, Native American cultures who lives outside the constraints of normal cultural rules, all right? Playing the role of a backwards clown by doing everything in reverse. 
the Hayoka, uh role is sometimes best filled by the Winky. Um, sacred clown in the culture of the Sioux Lakota Great Plains. Uh, the Hayoka were uh, Hayoka were uh, jester sitarists who speak novels and react. So this black elk, he describes himself as one, and he says he was visited as a child by these thunder beings. Okay, so as you start to dig into this, not necessarily thunder beings, but these two distinct um, roles, I guess, you find something out very interesting. So obviously the thunder beings, we're going to go there real quick. Thunder and lightning, we know that this is obviously a spiritual thing. Sacred power with some people. They do funny actions, um, and it keeps going from there. The Winky, all right, want to be like women. Historically, the Winky have, in some cases, been considered cycle, uh, social category of male-bodied individuals who adopt the clothing, work, and mannerisms of the Lakota culture usually considers feminine. Usually is referred to the homosexual man, whether or not the man is always gender non-conforming okay and this gets back to the pan reference okay so we're going to talk about pan here shortly um, most of us already have an idea of pan uh, the greek god it's where we get pandemic pandemonium uh, all the things that go along with what's happening in the world right now what i found really interesting was the fact that these Winky um, have this homosexual reference in the LGBTQ. And, and let me just say this. I'm not addressing the people. I want to talk about the spiritual side of everything. This doesn't have anything to do with these individuals or if a person happens to be watching this video, if they dress like this. There's a spiritual spiritual side to this, all right? A spiritual side that is manifesting in the flesh, period, okay? Uh, we are hosts for spirits, and it's either a good spirit from God where he places a new spirit in you or uh, a spirit of the enemy, okay? And that's, that's the bottom line. So this is not a dig on anybody, uh, but it is to call out these spirits and uh, expose them for what they really are, okay? So I found it interesting that the clown makeup or the, the clown attributes of some of these uh, transgenders uh, really fit that role of a clown spiritual reference that's taken over this person behind them and that that's, this is the way that they feel like they should be, okay, which goes back to our clown references again. It's again, this is like a, like a, like a tree it goes from this to this to this to this so here we are okay obviously pan goes back to satan um it's the greek religion pan is also bread bread and circus okay so um it's we've talked about this in other videos extensively so i'm not going to really get into it but it's the fertility god um panic pandemonium all those things come back to it um, okay, so, okay, so the first mainstream clown role portrayed by Joseph uh, Grimaldi uh, was in this role in the Harlequinade, which is a pretty much a British um, theatrical genre, okay, um, and he started this role with a pantomime. Okay. Now, what's interesting about this is this is where you're going to get the character Panaloon. Okay. So this, again, Panamine, Panaloon, Pan, Pandemonium, Panic, all this stuff starts to come to light. All right. So let's see here. Let's keep going. So, okay. Here we go. Panamine, Panaloon. <laughs> This is from the wiki page of the pantomime, okay, the Harlequinade. This is where the theatrical version, okay, this was the very first role of the clown uh, from uh, Mr. Joseph Grimaldi here. So this is a picture of Panalone, okay, all dressed in red. He's got a mask on that we've seen 
um, used by the elite. So let's let's just pull that up. So I thought this was pretty interesting. If you look at this guy's mask here, um, we've seen this all before, right? These half type masks. So let's just take a look because we're gonna we're gonna be here for a little bit anyway. So this is kind of what I had in mind, but it, it's so hard. You Google anything with masks now, and you, all you do is get the face covering. So, you know, stuff like this. Um, this is a decent one right here. Uh, but anyway, that just wanted to show that to you. Just kind of point that out. But um, what's interesting is, okay, so now you have the Steve Jackson box game, uh, the Illuminati, mutually assured distraction. Here we have a plethora of things. We obviously have some sort of vaccine. We have Wall Street. We have foaming at the mouth, the zombie, you know, this whole red side, this whole blue side, which is obviously a political thing. You have this guy dressed in red, clown nose. He sits at the very top. He's orchestrating this all. Cash is coming out of the, you know, military spending, whatever you want to put there. But the same guy here we have wearing red, Wearing a mask, wearing a mask. Uh, the only difference here, we have a red hat, which we're going to get into here in a little bit. But I just wanted to make the comparison here that this is all pan, okay? Panaloon, panamime, uh, pan, this clown here on top of the Illuminati uh, game, and panamime. So all this stuff, God, this there was so much stuff, guys, to sift through. I'm sorry if I'm struggling, but... Um, anyway, so we're going to talk about this character a little bit because it's, it's he's very interesting. Exceptional greed and status at the top of social order. Pantaloon is money in the communal world. It certainly seems to fit this guy right here. Correct? Um, so we're going to keep going. Oh, my computer needs to settle. Exceptional greed and status at the top of the social order. Pantaloon is money in the comedic world. Generally means old fool or dotard. So an interesting search, and I've, I put the search in the drive, is if you type in fool in the Bible, where it's listed, how many times, where it's at, and how it's used, will give you a good idea of what they're talking about. Costume. Pantaloon is characterized by using red almost all all the entire costume big bushy eyebrows long hook nose mustache gold medallion half mask it senses bony structure long hook nose mustache so we kind of see we get all that when i thought of immediately the reason i highlighted this the big bushy eyebrows i thought of this guy his name is colonel aquino and he is, I believe, former army colonel um, who was in charge of the intel community. Uh, I'm not sure where. Uh, Philippines, possibly, maybe. But he's a known Satan worshiper. I think he was involved in pedophilia. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but you can find all kinds of stuff about him on the, uh, the internet as well. But he has those big, those huge eyebrows. Um, you know, so it's just something that I thought was interesting. Um, Harry, being Harry has a lot to do with this. And you'll find that out if you watch those other videos. I'm going to touch on it a little bit here. Um, but, uh, yeah, it does have something to do with it. So the Pantaloon is the sixth character in the seven ages of men speech where, um, you, uh, in, Car in Shakespeare's As You Like Act 2, Scene 7, All the World is a Stage, which is something you can Google and read that. Um, the seven stages of men, uh, painting, there's a picture of it. Uh, it's like a stack of heads, uh, is what it is. And he's the sixth character in the seven ages of men, all the world's a stage, which comes back to our, our, what we're talking about. This whole circus, this whole carnival mentality, uh, is exactly what it is. Okay. We're going to switch gears for a second. We're going to talk about Esau. Okay. This, um, this story's always fascinated me. So we've already talked about the color red. He came out red all over, okay? 
and he wore a hairy garment. We talked about uh, Mr. Pantaloon up here, always wearing red, okay? Always wearing red. We have this guy over here, always wearing red. And now we have Esau coming out. The Bible makes a very distinct um, in this language about being red and hairy like a garment. So the story here, and I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. You have Rebecca, who's his mother. Esau has a twin brother named Jacob. And his dad is Isaac. Isaac and Rebecca got married. And Rebecca is given a blessing by the people when she departs. And I tied, as far as Sasquatch is concerned, if you want to look at those videos, there's a lot there that concerns this. And you're going to understand why here in just a second. So they blessed her as she's leaving, which I am under the assumption that blessings and curses in the Bible hold a lot of weight. Okay, And this is what they said to her. Our sister, may you become thousands of ten thousands, and may your offspring possess the gate of those who hate him. So the thousands of ten thousands to me references God's army because it's known as the 144,000. Okay. And you also have the, uh, you know, David, when he slew, um, he had, I'm sorry, not David, but let me reverse for a second. So in the Bible, when Rebecca is pregnant, the Lord tells her that there are two nations in her womb. There are two manners of people in her womb. And I'm actually just going to pull up the scripture. So hold on just for a sec. Okay. I'm a little frustrated because there's something I want to highlight, but I'm afraid I'm going to get copyright strike. But So just bear with me, okay? So you have um, Isaac, marries Rebecca. She was barren. Okay. And... Um, the Lord was entreated with him and Rebecca conceived and the children struggled together within her. And she says, if it be so, why Lord, why is this? I inquire of the Lord. And he says, there are two nations in your womb. Okay. There's two types of people shall be separated from your bowels. The one shall be stronger, the other people and the elder shall serve as younger. Okay. There were twins in her womb. Now she was blessed back here by a nurse okay it's the only place in the bible where nurse is used okay let me see where it was so it's 2459 in genesis okay and her nurse so talking about a person as a nurse is what i mean it's used 10 times in the bible but only here i believe it as a person okay so anyway she gets a blessing from, they sent away Rebecca, their sister, and her nurse, and Adam's servant, and his men, and blessed Rebecca, and said unto her, Thou art our sister, and the mother of thousands and millions, thy sheets shall so possess the gate of those which hate them. So she is the mother of the army of God. Okay? So what happens here? Okay? And I didn't understand this until I watched Watched Austin Powers, believe it or not. So we're going to get into that in just a second. But anyway, so he has, she has two kingdoms in her womb, two types of people, two twins. One's red and hairy, okay? The other is Jacob, which is a, you know, becomes Israel. So Israel, or Esau says to Jacob, feed me. So he has got a appetite of flesh to feed his flesh okay that's the storyline of this he's going to sell everything his birthright his he was born first he inherits everything he's going to sell that to his brother for food okay because he's hungry so anyway this goes on but what's 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 crazy here is he's called harry now the bible uses two words for harry in this situation okay and that's what we're going to talk about the first Harry is just normal Harry, okay? Harry body. So we look at this other Harry referenced right here. My brother is Harry. It's a totally different Strong's number. It's a totally different word. 
and it has a totally different meaning. And it really means a devil, a goat, a hairy kid, rough, a satyr, or a demon. So this kid is possessed by something, okay? And you don't have a quite an understanding of it until you start to put things together here. So in the movie, Austin Powers, we hopefully most of you have seen this, okay? If not, you're going to be, you need, I'll put a link in it that you need to watch. Um, Dr. Evil introduces this lady, Frau Parvisna, her, his, one of his teammates, as the founder of the militant wing of the Salvation Army. So let's just take Frau Parvisna for a second and we go back to our um, Rebecca. She is to be the mother of ten thousands of millions that will take over the gate of hell. All right, that's God's army. Okay, he, they are blessing her to have God's army in her. All right, so I know this is a lot. <laughs> I'm struggling a little bit trying to get through it. But what their blessing was, let me highlight this. The blessing is to be the mother of God's army, to possess her seed, to possess the gate of those which hate them. All right, that's the enemy. There's only two teams. There's there's uh, the good team and the bad team. And that is exactly what they are telling her, is may your seed possess the gate of those which hate him. Okay, it's God's army. I don't know why this isn't highlighting. My computer is running slow. Anyway, so she is the founder of the militant wing of the Salvation Army, which is Satan's way of saying the militant Christians, you know, God is the salvation, okay, and we are part of his army. So that's exactly what she really is, is she's really referring to, or he's really referring to her as Rebecca. So, so this is a jab at God's army, the thousands referred to in the blessing. So you get that, and later on we see Scott on Jerry Springer, okay, Dr. Evil's son. And look what he's wearing, a red, hairy garment, okay? So he comes out, and he's wearing this red, hairy coat, and he's got no recollection of his mother. And he thinks he was a test tube baby, okay? So he has no recollection of a mother. She actually comes out as the mother, and then he says, you know, I love you, okay? So... The two nations fighting in the womb, one is of light, one is of darkness, okay? And then she comes out and she says, no, I'm really your mother. But in fact, there was some clowning around. Somehow God allowed it. I don't know how. That happened in the womb of Rebecca. And that is why she had Esau. It's the same thing that happened in the garden, except a newer plight to it, okay? So the name Esau, to get confirmed on all of this and have understanding of all of this, you go back to the name. And the name Esau means to masterfully do a work, to do a creation, to do a mighty fashion, to fashion something masterfully in existence. And that's what he did. Think of all the aliens and all the hoopla surrounded by taking eggs and sperm and all of that. It's exactly what's going on. If you read the book of Giants... It was the mothers, you know, mothers gave birth to fearful giants, to fearful creatures. That's exactly what we have. And those are the demons or the clowns of today. Okay. So they died. Those demons all died. Those creations all died in the flood. But they've come back because he did a mighty work. He did a masterful fashion of something already in existence. I don't like to use that word creation because he didn't create. But look at the name Esau. Google it. it means doer. The, the the simplest term is doer. It's a doer. But if you dig into the, the actual verbs and pronouns and origination of the word, it means to masterfully do a mighty work. And that's exactly what Satan did. Is he did a mighty work creating his kingdom also in the room of Rebecca. Okay. So, those all died in the flood, but now their spirits 
are taking over in people today. And that's why you have these serial killers with clown references, John Wayne Gacy being the first one that comes to mind. You know, all these different, you know, insane clown posse, all these stuff. The the 2016 clowns on the street that were wanting to kill everybody. That's exactly what's going on here. Okay. So we're going to switch gears for a minute. I would ask that you reflect on the material thus far. In addition to this video, there are 20 more in the very talk in the Google Drive. It's impossible to showcase everything I've found appropriately. The best way to connect the dots is to utilize the Holy Spirit. Think back to all the crown, clown references in your life. We all have our own. There's obvious ones that we all know. I just mentioned 2016 was a rash of evil clown appearances all over the United States. Evil entities are always behind a disguise of some sort. That's the point. Our body is a host for spirits, good or evil. You either have a good or evil spirit in you. It may be sitting dormant, okay? It may be sitting dormant, but you have one in you. As we slip deeper into technology, bloodshed, um, all this stuff snowballs and the gates broaden, all right? And they allow other spirits to enter. And they will have a snowball effect until there's no control. Remember the movie? Um, oh, what was it? Give me a second. It'll come to me. Um, with Jesus, the blood shed that um, the blood that he shed, we can overcome the oppression of these manifestations. Um, oh, the movie was Legion. Uh, you remember how Michael? They were talking about, or, or you know, these are fallen angels, or what are these people coming at us? Uh, they're the weak-minded. He said. Remember, they were the weak-minded. They can't control themselves because the spirit in them is too great. It's it's done laying dormant. Okay, it's going to come out. And that's what's going to happen. All right. Okay, keep going. Circus. Philip Ashley. He was actually a dragoon, sergeant major. The dragoons, if you don't remember the dragoons, they're very much a um, they were the cavalry in the British army. All right, they were a bunch of punks. Uh, if you ever watched the movie Patriot, it's the Dragoons that they're fighting uh, in in that movie. Uh, Mel Gibson and his uh, you know his crew, I guess. Anyway, but anyway, he was a Dragoon Sergeant Major, a skilled a skilled equestrian. Anyway, the circus. We have all this stuff here, right? Tight ropes. Clowns, acrobats, hoopers, tightrope, walkers, jugglers, magicians, ventriloquists, unicycle, all these things. Okay. Etymology of the word. Helios, the sun god. Very simple. That's where it comes back to. All right. Circle. Being circled is in honor of the father, Helios, the sun god. We should know through the last video of who they are referring. Okay. August 4th, 19, 1777. Which, if you look up this word in Strong's, it means harvest and judgment. Okay? Yep. That's my cue. Harvest and judgment. Um, let me pull it up just to make sure. I was partially correct. So, I watched the movie last night. If you haven't watched this movie called Don't Look Up, go watch that movie. That's exactly what we're talking about. Don't look up. But anyway, it was six months, 14 days I looked up, and 614 is that. However, I was close. So H1777 is to judge or to contend with and plead, act as a judge, administer judgment, to plead a cause, execute judgment. And in the Greek, it is um, to be bound under obligation, subject, liable, um, guilty, worthy of punishment, guilty of anything, of a crime or penalty. So this happens to be Obama's birthday. The same day this man, who was known for founding the circus established the first circus august 4th 1777 which means helios the sun god which of course is our antichrist and we all saw that video obama had a spokesman mr j carney does that ring a bell carney right 
Carnival Carney. James Ferguson Carney was the White House spokesman. Carney language. The Carney vocabulary is traditionally part of a carnival cant or secret language, an ever changing form of communication, in large partly designed to be impossible to understand by an outsider. A cant is a jargon or language or a group often employed to execute or mislead people. Wow. Carney, Circus Carney. Carney language. Ever changing form of communication in large part designed to be impossible to understand. I guess they use some sort of weird language. I didn't know when you looked up the circus carnival, a uh, traveling carnival employee and the language they use. Mislead people. Come on, folks. Carney sought to become popularized in 1931 North America when the first carnival when we used to describe one or works of carnival, the carnival original meaning, a time of merrymaking before Lent. So what this is, when you start to look at this, and you start to look at carnival and carnivals, all the words that surround that, it's a time of basically gorging yourself before you fast. Okay, so the uh, Jim Caviezel said it best. Um, America is going to find a fast here real soon. They're going to be forced to fast. So right now we're in this merrymaking of gorging ourselves with liquor, with hookers, with sex, with food. And then we're going to be forced to do this. We're going to be forced to, to, to fast. Donated by a time of lawlessness. It's exactly where we're at. We kind of covered that already. But let's say it again. The carnival vocabulary is traditionally part of a carnival cant. Secret language. It is ever-changing form of communication in large part designed to be impossible to understand by an outsider. Carnival or circus represents the world in all of its glory. All the lust, all the lust of the flesh, the appetite of the flesh, the sights, the smells, the appetites, everything you desire. When you go to the carnival or circus, you can get all the desires you want. All the cotton candy, popcorn, candy, funnel cakes, uh, toys, you know, nothing really off limits. So what does carnival mean or what does carn mean? all this really mean carnal physical or especially sexual appetites earthly or worldly concerned with human matters flesh So carnival, elaborate costumes and masks allow people to set aside their everyday individuality. Sounds a lot like the elite, right? They wear those costumes and masks to set aside their individuality, who they are. They want to hide behind that and experience a heightened sense of social unity. They indulge in sexual, I'm sorry, excessive consumption of alcohol, meat, foods, uh, typical before upcoming Lent. Uh, is known for being a time of great indulgence before Lent, a time of stressing the opposite. Drinking, overeating, various other activities of indulgence are being performed. Mock fights, battles, food fights. You'll see this a lot in like, um, we see this today. Uh, if you look at the octagon um, of MMA, that's another form of the fights that took place in the Roman Colosseum. Essentially, it's just different. Uh, but the, here we have the, fat, the battles, the foods. Food fights, expression of mockery, of authority, um, you know, costumes, all this stuff, abusive language. But this is what the Bible says about all this stuff. 
That's what's important. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If a man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is of the world is the lust of the flesh, and is the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof will also pass away. But though that does the will of God, that does the will of God, will abide with Him forever. And this is what I was talking about the Spirit. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. And I'll take out the stony heart of flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And then you can walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people and I'll be their God. So it's the exact opposite of what the Bible wants us to do. Now, if you go to a circus, are you going to, you know, burn in hell? No, that's not the point. People take this to an extreme that is just ridiculous. And now is not the time. All right, There's always a time for celebration. There's always a time for those things. But with where we are in this world right now, it's not the time. So we're going to look at the word carn a little bit. Reincarnate. Remember we just talked about a spirit, right? To cause to be reborn in another body again. Refurbished, revitalized. Incardine, blood red. Another thing I want to talk about real quick is the color red. Okay, we, we talked about Esau being red, Panaloon, all that being red, and now this. I think it was so, and we talked about how Satan probably did this. We get a hint of a test tube. That's a hint. Uh, we don't know exactly what happened, but there's something that happened in that womb that wasn't appropriate, but God did allow it. <clears throat> and, um, you know, Adam was red, all right? Came out red. We know ruddy is another word that's used to describe Adam. Also David. And I believe this was a play, again, from Satan to copy or mimic God. Um, God made Adam uh, in ruddy fashion, skin color. And so did Satan have his own quote-unquote creation as red all over. So just something to think about. Incarnate. Invested in a bodily nature or form. Embodied with human form personified. Incarnate spirit. Okay, so now here we have this spirit that's come in, okay, into the flesh, incarnated into the flesh. The spirit, so carnival, carnate, spirit. You guys seen these connections here? Carnivorous, predatory. So these things are predatory on the people of God. Flesh eating, cannibal, Cain and Abel, cannibal, destroy the flesh, destroy the brother, destroy the enemy. That's how they see us. They see us as an enemy, a brother, but an enemy. Carnage, violently killed or maimed bodies. These are all a play on the carnival. Carnissal. Teeth for ripping flesh. Think about your evil clowns and the teeth. There's a gener generation that are pure in their own eyes. These are the people. These are the elite. These are the Edoms of this world. And yet not washed of their filthiness. This is a generation. How lofty are their eyes. Their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. These are the people in positions, quote unquote, elevated positions above us that run this show, this carnival. And these are their teeth. Now you can Google this all day on YouTube. I'll, I've got all the videos in the drive. You can take a look. Um, the reptilians, whatever you want to call, but this is exactly what this scripture is talking about. These people, their eyelids, you'll see them flip their eyelids. You can see all that happen. And there's tons and tons and tons and tons of videos on these out there that you can watch.
So we've been disillusioned long enough, haven't we? We've all fallen for the lies, me included. All of us. We focus too much on the temporal and give no thought to the eternal. Satan has done a wonderful job making heaven look boring and the earth and the present look so inviting. Why? In order to keep you here, locked in? To destroy your soul? To keep you from exploring the eternal truth? Who wants to retire at 65 and enjoy the next 10 years of your lives with medical ailments and responsible spending? Does that even sound good? I've seen a taste of the eternal. Um, I'm not going to get into it here, but I have. Um, and I've seen it in some degree, and I promise you it's nothing like what we have here. It's beyond your imagination. It really is. The enemy won't stop. The circus carnival illusion is going to continue, and it'll get worse. He's going to employ the help of the fallen angels to inject the carnival circus with steroids. The temporal will expand in greater measures. Medical advancement will give you a longer life. Reverse aging technology, cure for cancers, all that stuff's going to come. Travel, easy travel, less work, more play. Sexual experiences will be expounded. Conveniences will be off the charts. You won't have to do this or that to go do this or that. So it's going to be a false uh, advancement here. But there will always be death. That's something he's not going to get rid of. There's no immortality with him. And this is highlighted in the God's Word as well. The circus is a company of performers who put on diverse entertainment shows that include clowns, acrobats, dancers, trapeze, tightrope walkers, jugglers, magicians, ventriloquists, unicycles, all that stuff, right? Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and all the deceivableness of unrighteousness of them that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this cause, God will send them a strong delusion that they will believe the lie. And this is your lie. This is a small taste of it. He's going to come and he's going to bring all the fallen with him. And it's not going to be musicians, dancers, hoopers, typewrote walkers, and jugglers. It's going to be, you know, intergalactic travel, it's gonna, you know, um, immortality. Uh, you know, perfect weight loss, perfect bodies, all this stuff. It's all going to change, but it's all going to be the same. It's just going to be inflated. And because they want to dive into the world again, the Great Reset, the Lord is going to allow them to believe it. They'll embrace this lie with so much love and conviction. They will be militant on protecting it. <laughs> Let me say that again. They will be militant on in protecting that lie. Yes, they will. They will look at God the Father as the enemy and not the eternal truth. So again, I just finished the minute watching the movie Don't Look Up and, and in that movie, the lie was fiercely guarded. Fiercely guarded and fiercely followed all the way till the end. All the way till the very end when the comet's like coming down on top of them. They're like, they're 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 like yeah whatever and um the truth was shunned and made fun of and ridiculed and this is where our persecution comes in this is where the persecution comes in because they're not going to want to have anything to do with it because why because god's not allowing going to allow them to see the truth since they want to believe the lie he's going to give them such a strong delusion they're going to believe it they'll want to live forever but without god and without their Savior, Jesus Christ. And the hits just keep coming. Red hats. <laughs> Again, I'm addressing the spirits here, not people individually. Okay. Red hats, the Moy of Easter Island. Wearing red hats. You have the red hat of... Uh, the... Um, Shriners. The statues are symbols of power and authority of religious and political. 
sacred spirits believed to be charged with magical spiritual essence called mana, which was interesting, to watch over the people, the fallen watchers, right? What do they do? They go to hospitals, right? Watch over the people. Everything's for the people. This is what's on every hat. And I'm surprised more people don't see this. This symbol right here is on every hat. It's obvious to me. <laughs> the Bible talks about the great sword that's coming. It talks about a one world leader. And obviously we know Islam is part of that end time game. And this is the symbol for Islam. It's everywhere. Right? It's it's a... Uh, let's go here real quick. You know, it's in Russia, Turkey, the end time game. It's it's all it's all there. So when asked about this hat, I thought this article was pretty interesting. Dear Pastor Gallops, what is the connection between the Fez, which is the hat the Shriners wear, and the Muslim faith? What other connections to the Muslim faith does the Shrine have? All right. Uh, he could petition to become a Shriner, Arabic order, blah, blah, blah. He had to complete this. One of the most distinguishing marks of Shriner is the Fez hat that he wears, so named after the city of Fez, Morocco, which, by the way, has been the site of numerous documented massacres, carnage, for both Jews and Christians by various Muslim conquerors. The Fez is a distinctly Muslim symbol, at least indirectly celebrates the Muslim conquest of the area. The emblem found on the Fez hat is Muslim origin. It contains the Arab and pagan god of the crescent moon and the star, originally a symbol of the Ottoman Empire, now an international symbol of Islam. The symbols are hung on the scimitar, the Arabic, Arabic word for sword. This is the sword that has killed the infidels down through the ages under Muslim conquest. Situated in the middle of the, of the symbol, the moon symbol, is the Sphinx. This represents the great Sphinx of Egypt, which has roots thoroughly in ancient Egyptian paganism and demonic symbolism. The word Sphinx means the strangler, or as the more widely used in Arabic, the father of terror. Perhaps this symbolizes that Allah truly is the father of terror. Etymology, Sphinx, strangler to squeeze, tighten up. Exactly what he said. Who's that look like to you? This was interesting. The history of the Shriners, the group adopted a Middle Eastern theme and soon established temples throughout the temple, um, has now been replaced by the Shrine Auditorium and Shrine Center. The first temple established was Mecca Temple, known as the Mecca Shriners, established in New York City, Masonic Hall on September 26, 1872. So the first shrine or temple in America was in New York, and it was called Mecca, our black cube, right? To be a Shriner, you can get inducted into this order, which is the Royal Order of Jesters. The Royal Order of Jesters is a male fraternal organization allowed only by Shriners in good standing to join. Admission is by invitation only. Mirth is king. Moth, uh, mirth is their... Um, slogan the royal order of jesters is a fun degree with absolutely no serious intent the motto mirth is king is sufficient to give voice and purpose of the organization the royal order of jesters feel that there are times after our hard work and dedication to family and mankind when everyone should remember to laugh and appreciate the good work one has done the icon of the order is the billiken this is a billiken it's a charm doll created by art teacher and illustrator Florence Prez of Kansas City, Missouri. And she saw this mysterious figure in a dream. And this is how she described it. Monkey-like with pointed ears, a mischievous smile, a tuft of hair on its pointed head. His arms are short and generally sitting on his legs stretched out in front of him. 
the way uh, Bilkin is known as the God of things as the way they ought to be. Now, these people are supposed to be Christians. These people are supposed to be Jesus Christ followers. Right? Again, I'm not addressing anyone personally, but that's what they say. But yet, this is okay. Stand erect, Court of Class 97. These are just some things I found on eBay or whatever you can buy. Royal Order of Jesters. Okay. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Because your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks, he speaks a lie, and he speaks of his own. He is a liar and the father of it. Okay, so at the beginning of the video, we discussed a little bit of the beginning um, about the origins of clowns, uh, kind of with Native American culture in mind. The point I want to drive home here is there needs to be a gateway or door for them to enter. We start seeking other methods outside of what is written in God's word, and we discover a very slippery slope. Ouija boards, tarot cards, channeling, mediums, DMT, uh, drugs, alcohol. Some of these may even start off as innocent, but they are very far from it. Generally, denying yourself and fasting and prayer is how you can communicate with the Lord, also with humility. Whereas promoting yourself and inflating ourselves is where we find ourselves in trouble. Uh, we all love to be entertained and we have a TV in almost every home. So that was our entertainment at home. What started off as probably completely innocent has developed into a huge gateway for spirits to, to communicate with us. Whether we see it or not, whether the TV, whether you're watching it or not, um, it's there. And it can be on and you might not be in the room. These spirits will start to leave traces of evidence. Okay, You'll start to see things uh, as you start to look at commercials or TV shows or the news or... Um, even some physical manifestations, which we're going to cover here now. And the Holy Spirit filled person can see these traces. So there's been a lot of talk about morphing and shape shifting in the Christian community, you know, reptilians and different things, and, you know, weird faces and reporters, etc. A lot of people will see this, and, you know, the face will shift into a weird, grotesque feature, while the rest of the camera footage is pretty much intact. Uh, just to give you an example that comes to mind that everybody probably knows is like Bill Hader, um, known for on his spot on personations of people. Uh, but if you watch his videos, he even takes on the likeness of these people to where his eyes change, his teeth even change. Uh, it's very, very strange. And I put those in the drive as well. So you can watch those. I couldn't believe, you know, a friend of mine told me that and I was like, oh, I got to see that to kind of believe it type of thing. And I saw the one in Arnold Schwarzenegger, and it actually looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger on the stage. So these spirits fool with your eyes. How they do it exactly, I'm not sure, but we're going to look at a couple, explore a couple possibilities. Uh, so he does like Arnold and Tom Cruise and Al Pacino. Those are the three that I, I really saw. How does this seem possible? Remember, spirits can exhibit some control. Bringing these spirits can overwhelm and take over the host and do something extraordinary. Um, there's a lot of things like in the circus community that are considered like impossible. That's impossible to do. But when you start to get the spirit and the, and the takeover starts to happen, um, those things are possible. Just in the, like in the Bible where it says they're, they'll want to die, but they won't be able to die. It's because that spirit is still dragging that you know, broken boned body along. Um, there was a video when I first uh, came to Christ of these two women in British Columbia, or not British Columbia, but uh, in England that were hit by cars and they were still running from the cops and they couldn't believe it. They were like, she was just hit by a semi. How was she still up and moving? And they were trying to get them arrested and they were running down the freeway acting crazy. And I was like, it's because that spirit in them is just overwhelming that body. 
and they're on something, you know. People always say, well, yeah, that's drugs. It's drugs, true, but it's that's the gate. That's only the doorway for that spirit to get in there and, and start manipulating the body like that. That's why you get, you know, like, uh, you know, people walking backwards upstairs in a crab walk or, you know, or bending their joints completely backwards and, you know, all that kind of, I'm not saying double jointed people, but I'm just saying, you know, uh, all those things that just seem impossible possible. And this is a good example of that because that is impossible to change your face. And that's exactly what happens there. But anyway, something to look at. Um, so yeah, just like we just talked about, think of the impossible circus feats that happen again for entertainment. Uh, remember, it's for you to lose your focus, mutually assured distraction. They're trying to keep you distracted. Just like the Wizard of Oz, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. All right. They want you to focus on what's what's really going on, you know, out in front, be fearful, full of amazement. All right. It's really just an ordinary guy, but it's the spirit behind that guy that's doing what it's doing. So this is just some morphing, morphing clips right here. Um, and I believe what I think is happening is something to do with the bending and manipulating of light. So God is light. We're in a prison on this place, kind of like a prism, right? If you bend light, you do it through a prism. So I think there's something here with bending of the light. And it has that spirit shows itself and what's really behind that person. So we're going to just take a, you know, real stroll here. All the videos of these are in the drive, so you can take a look at them. Um, and what it shows is like, and you really see it here, is like a black and white stripe pattern going on. Okay. And you'll see it with her eventually too, as, as time goes on. But um, I got an idea and I want to run it by you and see what you think. So I know, again, I know this isn't much. This is just a little snapshot of a couple things here. It's not a whole lot. Um, and it's not going to be enough to convince a non-believer that, oh, something's going on. But at the end of the day, you could show them everything and they're not going to believe unless the Lord really opens their eyes and they humble themselves. So it's kind of a two-way street there. Anyway, so anyway, the, um, the like I said, the videos are there. Here's a couple more. Um so seeing these black and white manifestations occurring on many videos I've watched reminded me of these clowns. We're going to talk about these clowns back in our history. The Pueblo Clown. Tricksters, jesters uh, in the Kachina religion. A separate group, Kivas. These were secret societies or fraternities. I thought that was real interesting. This is kind of a ritual place. Like, uh, you know how the elite stand in those circles and they all do their little, you know, chanting or whatever. This is, these kivas are similar to that. It was kind of a separate, I can pull it up real quick. So yeah, here's our Pueblo clown, right? Right off a of wiki star, you know, whole nine yards. But anyway, um, we're talking about these kivas. So it's kind of like, um, place where they would come out here and do these chants political meetings and the Kachina belief system it's kind of like they're elite I guess is what the way I take it from what I read but anyway you know you see these big circles you know you see the elite all stand in those big circles I have like some table in the middle where they're doing a sacrifice or whatever but it just reminded me of that so it's the same stuff, you know, it's the same stuff, different different way of doing it. But um, anyway, these Pueblo clowns, these striped clowns look exactly when these things manifest in some way, shape, or form. Okay. So the role of these clowns, curing society using black magic <laughs> and most of these are reporters right these clowns perform monthly rituals summer for rain november for the gods for curing society black magic in order for a clown to perform meaningful social commentary via humor the clown's identity must be concealed the sacred clowns of the pueblo people however do not employ masks but rely on body paint headdress um 
These individuals present themselves in black and white, horizontal stripes, painted on their bodies and faces, black circles around the mouth and eyes, part their hair in the center, um, and they'll put corn husks in it. Let's see here. So this is where we get into, a lot of guys have tied this liquid crystal to this to the morphine okay i don't want to scroll back up here because my computer's slow yeah, it doesn't want to work right but anyway so this black and white okay i just want to show you that to this liquid crystal now i included a video in the google drive that explains something very profound with this and that's when you look up by refringence Altering the polarization of light and liquid crystals. God is light. So somehow they're trying to mask their identity with this bending light. And when it doesn't work, that's when you see it. Maybe it has something to do with TV. You know, I don't know. But this is a very good video. She does a really good job. It's very quick. About... Biorefringence. <laughs> okay. The Kachina. All right. We talked about that briefly about with the Pueblo. The Kachina belief is what it's called. The concept is three different aspects. Supernatural being, Kachina dancers, Kachina dolls. This is this is really, I thought this was really, really interesting. Um, so it's the spirit and the religious beliefs of the Pueblo people, cultures located. Okay. Here we go. Kachina. Overview. Kachinas are spirits or personifications of things in the world world. Think about TV entertainment for a second. Okay, when you watch something, let's just say something funny. You, uh, everyone watched Christmas, so we're going to talk about Christmas Vacation. All right. Funny movie. Everyone's watched it. But everyone can relate to that because they know somebody like that. They know, <laughs> they know a Cousin Eddie. Someone knows a cousin Eddie, or has dealt with a cousin Eddie, or a you know a Griswold. You know, you know they've all dealt with those types of people. So it becomes entertainment because it's it's exaggerated, it's funny, and it's entertaining. It draws your attention because it's familiarization. So these kachinas are spirits or personifications of things in the real world. Okay, and that's what I thought of when I read that. I was like, that's that's like. It's like the Brady Bunch. Everyone knows a family kind of like the Brady Bunch. And, you know, you want that to be your family or whatever. It's familiar to you. So when I started looking at this, <laughs> the, other, the other channel I talked about brought this up. Okay, this test card. This test card pattern. And essentially, everyone should know what this is. It was a test signal. Typical broadcast. You know, there's no program going on the broadcast, but the transmitter's active. So they would put these things in front of the, the camera and these cards would be used for supposedly calibration and alignment, matching cameras, camcorders, blah, 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 blah. And you look at them and you're like, oh, they're kind of weird, you know? All right, whatever. Um, you know, this one kind of has a face. You know, there's a little mouth, maybe nose. I don't know. You start looking at this and then you look at the Kachina dolls and they're, they're almost identical. And you're like, what? the what is going on but yeah look at this i mean that guy looks i mean it's almost you're like what in the world so you have some sort of um familiarization with these spirits and these test cards going through the broadcast now satan is the prince and power of the air which means the airwaves which means signals, you know, wireless, communication, all that stuff. So I, I can't quite put my finger on it completely, but it's, it's a spirit that is manifesting and they're using this to get it through. I, you're going to see more, so just bear with it because we're just starting here. And they look exactly like these Kachina dolls. So test card F was in the BBC, okay, and it's a girl with a clown. Um, 
Test Card F was a test card created by the BBC on television in the UK. Um, this girl was called Carol Hersey, Hersey uh, and she's playing Tic-Tac-Toe, which actually was invented by the Pueblo Indians. And um, yeah, so anyway, and she's got Bubbles the Clown, and she's surrounded by these, you know, gray scales or whatever they want to call it. And um, she was Test Card F. Now, there was a TV show called Life on Mars on the British Airways that depicted this girl. And this is what it says about her. Now, this goes this goes deeper than I, I cared to go. Life on Mars, and then there's there's all kinds of connections with this ashes to ashes here and and different things uh, as well. But um, you know, the clown angel of death. But anyway, so the test card girl was in this show and it was a girl that resembled Carol and um, she taunts this officer named Sam and uh, like one example of that she's he's trying to defuse a bomb and he's like red wire yellow wire you know and he fails to pick the correct wire and now you're dead Sam they're all dead because of you so there's just all kinds of little weird stuff with this but um and she's torturing this guy, Sam, and she represents the devil in him. Um, so, you know, there's just all kinds of stuff that goes along with this. And uh, she says, if you want to be melodramatic, she represents the apocalypse or the end. Um, and then Bubbles, the first character, the clown angel of death who appears to terrorize. So there's just all kinds of connections with this girl, with this clown, in this show, Ashes to Ashes, and um, Life on Mars. That <laughs> just keeps going and going and going. Okay. As you can see, the world is Satan's playground. Almost everything I've encountered that he does is a play off of what God has already done. This is his Eden, so he thinks. Okay. We are spiritually birthed through the Holy Holies, which is the invention that is a cube. Remember our black cube from earlier. The circus is a play on his rules of his manifestations, his seed, his production of pride. The Roman circuses had a phallus in the middle of them, much like a penis in a vagina planting a seed. Put this in modern day terms and hope you can understand the meaning behind pitching a tent. Uh, nothing but the destruction of flesh, spirit, and soul excites him. The circuses were also a place of martyrdom. All right, that was uh, in these coliseums here, all for entertainment. You know, the fighting, you know, MMA, all this stuff is, is still going on today. Football games, it's all bread and circus, right? Bread and circus is superficial appeasement, okay? Let's, let's appease them with bread or pan and circus. Pan is Satan. Give them Satan and give them games. Is it worth settling for? Or would you rather explore the eternal with your creator? Renew your mind, people. Understand the time that you're in. Understand what this world really is. It's it's a, just a testing ground is what this place is. That's all it is. It's a testing ground for you to focus on him and the eternal. He will guide you through it. He'll get you through it. All right. It may be difficult, but he'll get you through it. He always does. He won't leave you or forsake you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, this was a daunting task, guys. Um, there is so much to this. The red face paint around their mouth. Blood. I mean, it, it goes so deep. It just... I couldn't believe it. Um... Hopefully, I scratched the surface enough for you to do some of your own study and your own research while there's still time. Um, again, the folder's full of information. All the documents I referenced are in it. Every every wiki page I've referenced is there. Videos, other things that you can use. So uh, feel free to share it or however you want to, you know, feel free to use it. God bless you guys. Take care. 
Love you all.